Where is the fun in new games? Do you remember a time where you got home from school, work, a party, wherever, and hopped on a game that you just played for hours? Your buddies could have been there, or maybe they weren't. What mattered is that you were enjoying yourself. Those moments for me were when I was 13. I'd get home from playing my sport at school and hop on my Xbox to play Minecraft with my other teammates. We'd play for hours, and snow days were entirely devoted to playing on that world. What happened to those moments? You could say that it's just the nostalgia kicking in, or maybe me just getting old, but I've had moments like that recently from games that aren't recent releases. What's going on guys? It's Poet. And today we're going to try and tackle a rather debilitating topic. What is missing from modern games? I want to start by simply saying, all of what I'm about to say is my opinion. You are completely allowed to disagree or agree, and we can all just go about our days. If you disagree or have ideas of your own or something you want to share, share them in the comments. I've had the discussion with my friends and I love hearing different sides or points to this argument, so let me know your two cents in the comments. With that out of the way, I'd like to start at the root of what made these old games so much fun. I'm talking about the original Battlefront 2, the original Modern Warfare 2, the original Cuckold Life Simulator. Wait. I'm the only one that plays, and a handful of other games from when I was growing up that I'll throw on the screen now. Some of these games are old, old, but when they were out they just hit different, you know? Now I play the current Modern Warfare 2, or the recent Battlefront 2, and while both have made massive strides for the gaming community, visually, gameplay wise, and content wise, it's just not really the same. Hell, even some of the games from the list like Siege just fall short of what they once were. So the question, or questions arise. What's missing or what happened? While a lot of this probably just seems like rose tinted glasses talk, and it kinda is, I think that new games have a couple of glaring problems. And I think the main problem is the new meta for game developing companies is the live service route. Granted, there are great games that do that, Destiny 2 being a shining example of Rags to Riches live service game that I still play. But for others, they fall short on the delivery of content in a timely manner. If you're going to have a live service game, you have to be, well, alive to keep the game alive. Think of the amount of stuff that comes out for Destiny 2. And if you're not a avid player of Destiny 2, I'll fill you in. A new season comes out at roughly every two months. There's uh, new story content with that, new guns, new like physical content, new store content that you can buy and there are usually new dungeons or strikes. The strikes that are already in the game, there are endless rotations of those activities as well as different crucible game modes that you can play usually once a month. And on top of that, every five to six months, I'd say there is a new major DLC. Now let's look at a game that came out very recently, Modern Warfare 2 2022. Where is everything? They shot out some weird dungeon thing and have just been completely quiet. I like playing the new COD, but when there's nothing left to do there, it kind of is hard for me to get back into. I know season two is coming and it's supposed to be like a huge update, like with a bunch of reworks, but what am I supposed to do in the meantime? Beat my head off a brick wall trying to play Warzone 2, but get destroyed by people who wire entire buildings to detonate the nanosecond I step in it? No thanks. The games of old, sure, maybe DLC wasn't a thing for them, or had less content, but that DLC that they gave you usually kept you entertained enough that you could ride it out until the next DLC or the next patch, or maybe even a new game came out. And the good thing about having variety back in the day, you know, the game market wasn't absolutely dookie then, pretty much all games were half decent then there were a couple stinkers don't get me wrong but you could go and hop on another game while your favorite game was burning you out live service can be great but it's called live service for a reason so where's the service going back to the words i said about mi staying around playing the game my second point is that i think the newer games just don't offer the same replayability as older games do as a shining example, I will look at CSGO, arguably the gateway drug of PC first-person shooters. 
As of recording, this 11 year old game is sitting at 700,000 players currently online and playing the game. It is 2.45 in the morning on a Thursday. I've since gone to bed and woke up. It's roughly noon now, uh, 12.18 to be exact, and Modern Warfare 2 2022 has 98,000 players, roughly 98,300 rounded up to the best of my ability. It's a Friday, a Friday at noon. And sure, you could say people are at work. I'll update you even later. Okay, guys, it is now 827 at night. There is 96,000. What is going on? I've got these stats off of the community hub tab on these games, and you might think that I'm just targeting MW2, but don't you worry, I looked at the other big FPS games too. Apex, Siege, and even my main squeeze, Destiny 2. Are we surprised? CSGO has adapted with the times, or has at least tried to, but they never got rid of their core focus. That core aspect of their game, it's a FPS game. The guns work in specific ways and the maps are simple and fun to learn, along with the weapons. You can make the argument that it's just as fun to learn that in the newer games, and to some extent, you'd be right. But the things they add to CSGO, as compared to the newer games, don't completely shift the core replayability of that game. The R8 was broken when added to the game, but you didn't have to use the R8 to win. When Stasis was added to Destiny 2, if you weren't running a Stasis Hunter in the Crucible, you were dead. You didn't have a good time. That is what I'm talking about. When you have to shift the way that you play to enjoy a game, or just win at a game, it doesn't really make you want to replay that game, does it? And my last point, for what I think is missing from modern games, is just passion. This is depressing as all hell, but I remember a time where games from AAA studios were crafted with careful consideration and refined for months after release, down to the smallest issues. The game that rings true to these words, in my mind, would be Battlefield 3. That was a horrible launch, nobody will deny that. Battlefield 3's launch was probably the most broken launch they had until Battlefield 2042. But when Battlefield 3 was all said and done, it was a great game that a lot of people loved. So why can't new games do that? Three games that were semi-recently released and that I think are just filled with the developer's passion for making their game the best are Deep Rock Galactic, Ready or Not, and Risk of Rain 2. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on them, I made a whole separate video on those three games just touching on how much I enjoy them that I definitely think you should check out. You can feel the work and the love that went into making them while you play with how smooth they play, or the soundtrack, or the attention to details that their communities ask for or call out. Every update they put out is crafted carefully and refined almost immediately if there's a bug. The DLCs aren't usually price pointed and if they are, they're reasonable and there's just a lot of content there that is replayable. These are not AAA studios like Triarch or Activision or the Forbidden One. And I think it shows in the quality of product they make. Deep Rock was released in 2018 and is still being updated to this day. Hell, it just had an update like four days ago at the time of this recording, and we're still waiting on Season 2 for Modern Warfare 2, and still waiting for Battlefield 2042 to unbury itself. I don't know if my message will ever be heard, but holy crap dude, sometimes less is more. Just make a quality product, even if it takes more time, and dump yourself into it. Games in some sense are a work of art, and the AAA space needs to start making some good art again. All this being said, I don't think all new games are unenjoyable. In fact, I've had a blast on the new COD, as you can see from all my shorts. It's fun and will entertain me usually for a couple hours. I'm just stating that the new games don't have the love behind them that the older games do that make people want to go back. I know they could, and maybe eventually they will, but with the lack of consistent updates, borderline unplayable launches, and losing their focus on the original game that they were making, they're doomed to pump out another cash grab everyone gets fed up with and never goes back to. Let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments. I'm more than happy to discuss it with you guys. I know this isn't a typical poet video, but I've just been looking around the game space lately and have been so disappointed with games that I was hyped for. If you made it this far in the video and have enjoyed it, drop a like. It goes a long way for me, and if you're interested in taking it the extra mile, subscribe. Either way, my name's Poet. I'll catch you in the next one.